Sunhouse just put out a beta version of Sensory Percussion that includes a brand new controller type. I got the chance to check this out a while back and was so excited about it that I made a tutorial for the envelope controller immediately. Some time has passed since then, and I thought I would just mention that the functionality as seen in the following video is pretty much the same as the current version. The main difference is that the envelope segments can be non-linear for snappier or more organic modulation shapes. Okay, on with the tutorial, hope you enjoy. Welcome to my tutorial on the new Sensory Percussion Envelope Controller. You can get the SPS file to follow along with all of these examples either on my Patreon or my website. Check out the description of this video for both links. I first wanted to illustrate how you can use the envelope controller in conjunction with the built-in envelope controls on the sampler. This is a snare sample I made with a weird slapback tail. It sounds cool on its own, but it might be hard to use it in a musical context. In the old days, your best bet might be to use a velocity controller to modulate the length of the sample. That way, the quieter notes cut off that delayed tail, but they can still come in with the louder notes to emphasize backbeats and maybe contribute some cool texture. This is a good step, but what if you come to decide that the delayed tail is too loud? You could go back and create a new sample, but welcome to the envelope controller. I set this envelope controller to control the volume of our sampler. This modulation shape is now applied to the volume knob here. The hold section of this envelope dictates that the sample is going to be playing only at 19% of the volume of the initial attack, which is going to tuck that delayed tail down very nicely. We now have a huge amount of control of this sample's volume over time. Sometimes two envelopes are better than one. Let's use an envelope to drastically change a sound. I have this dorky percussive sample here. This envelope is dramatically modulating the pitch of the sample. Now it sounds like something exotic. Note how the envelope scaling with velocity has a huge effect on the sound. Before, this might have made a mediocre sound effect for a lame corporate animated product video. Now I can use this as sound design in an epic sci-fi movie. This is how you make the big bucks. Here's a similar trick, but in a different musical context. We're using the envelope controller on pitch for a looping hi-hat sample. This results in a cool burst effect. Try experimenting with different envelope shapes here. Subtle changes are going to alter the burst feel quite a bit. Using an envelope on pitch can be a really expressive melodic tool. With quantized pitch enabled, the envelope can act as subtle ornaments. Note that the range of this envelope is rather small and the sensitivity is wide open. This makes it easy to do subtle stuff. We can use a longer envelope to create a little motif in our setup. In this example, we're using a kick to fire off an envelope that's mapped to sample pitch on our snare. This creates a discernible relationship between the kick and snare, a repeatable talking drum lick. That same approach can be used to create a melody. This envelope is acting as a scalable, one-shot sequence. Notice that I have this envelope modulating the pitch of another sampler in the opposite direction. The second sampler only responds to harder velocities, giving you the option to add in the counterline. Also, the envelope is modulating a send to reverb, which in relationship to pitch, acts like keyboard tracking for reverb amount. More on a micro level, we can use envelope controllers in a traditional pitch envelope application. Here we're adding some pitch bend at the onset of the sample. This controller on the kick adds a little warble for mid-pitch sample pitch expressivity, just like a string player or vocalist would do naturally. Here's a 
a classic pitch envelope application. This envelope adds a super sharp dive in pitch right at the transient. Notice the super short decay time. This way we can take this rather unpunchy kick sample and add a nice bright click on the attack, which can make a huge difference in the sample's effectiveness. Okay, let's get off pitch modulation and look at another way to use an envelope modulation. Using that same example as before with the added transient on the kick, let's say we want to take this in a more ethereal zone by putting it in some huge reverb. With that sharp attack, it does not sound so great with the verb. Using a weird shaped envelope, we can mix in the reverb after the attack so that the verb is really only affecting the woofy part of the sample. much more palatable. In this final example, we're pulling it all together a bit and adding some extras. To start, I turned this tuned down wine glass sample into a kick using our steep pitch envelope trick. To enhance the kickness, I also applied this envelope to filter cutoff. Huge shout out to Johnny Rogers, the man behind the glass that made this beautiful sound. On the rim of our snare, we have a looping hi-hat sample. Pitch is being modulated by an LFO. It's also being modulated by this envelope. I really like having two modulation sources on a parameter. You can do this in a really subtle way in lots of places, and it will add so much motion to what you're playing. If we navigate back to our kick channel 1 tab, we can see the second envelope controller on the kick, which is modulating the reverse button on the hi-hat. Because this is button control, the envelope is kind of just split into whatever parts are low and whatever parts are high. The result is a sample being temporarily reversed just after each kick. Kind of weird, but I like it. On the snare head, we have a weird envelope shape modulating delay time. This envelope is also modulating filter cutoff on the kick, which makes for a nice pumping effect. That's it for this tutorial.